All right, all right. Today we had FOMC and SPY close down 0.92% and we got the close down below the critical support at 442 and we are now breaking out of this consolidation wedge to the downside. Now, if you go back to my weekly technical analysis, I said there was a good chance on the weekly chart that we would get a bounce to 450 and then come down to 430. And you can now see on the daily chart, this is playing out very nicely with the breakdown below 442. So the critical supports were 442 and then below that we should see 436. And if we can't hold 436, we should go down to 430. Now from the weekly chart, there's a good chance after 430 that we're going to continue higher. So it looks like those gaps to the upside will fill, but not until we go a little bit lower and test critical support. And then once we start to bounce, then we're likely going to fill the gaps around 447 and 455. So remember, gaps typically fill. We just don't know exactly when. And now it does look more clear like when we are going to see those gaps fill after we hit some of this critical support to the downside. Now there is also a gap at 423. So it is possible things get a little bit lower than what we expect to see at 430. But if we break 430, that is going to look extremely bearish on the weekly chart. So right now, I still think there's a good chance we hold support at 430, assuming, of course, that we do break that support at 436. So everything is looking great from the weekly chart, and we're now seeing it playing out on the daily chart with today's break and close below 442. Now, keep in mind, nothing moves in a straight line, and we are getting close to the lower Bollinger Band. So even if we go hit 436, it's still possible we bounce back up towards resistance before we go down and hit 430. So just because we're breaking critical support at 442 does not mean you just blindly short. There's still going to be plenty of opportunities to buy at support and sell at resistance. But do keep in mind the path of least resistance below 442 will be that path towards 430. And there could be a buyer strike until we get there or people continuing to sell and short the market on the way lower. So as you can tell from the price action below all the moving averages and below that critical support at 442, we will be looking for a high probability that we're going to 430 over the next couple of weeks. This goes hand in hand with the seasonality that the back half of September is typically bearish and volatile. And we had that high in the middle of the month and now we're selling off. So it does look like price action is confirming seasonality and we now have that breakdown below critical support. So next up, we're looking for lower highs and lower lows to 436 and 430 and continue to respect the trend is lower now that we have the break of a lower high to a lower low. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we were down 1.44% today and the triple Qs also rejected that resistance at 370, which was the critical support breakdown and we had the clear breakdown below the 50 EMA today. So the next critical support in the triple Qs below 370 will be the test of this support trend line and the previous low in August, which is right around 361. So below 370, we're looking for 361. If we break 361, we'll be looking for 355. And if we break 355, we're looking for 347. Follow the trend in the path of least resistance below 370 will be lower, which means even if we get bounces to lower highs, we're still looking for lower lows afterward until we break out of this downtrend. This is why you always want to know where your critical levels are because this price action is defining your trade plan. And now that we're below 370, the price action has done all the talking. On the Dow Jones, we were down 0.22% today and the Dow Jones was holding up relatively strong for most of the day, which meant we were trading above 346. But as you can tell, as of the close, we had a bearish close down below support at 344. So this is likely going to take us back down to the weekly support level right around 342. And if we can't hold that support, we're likely going down to fill that gap at 340. So on the daily chart, critical resistance is now the old critical support, which is 346. So in order to get bullish, we need to see the Dow Jones closing back above 346. Otherwise, we're expecting a trend down towards the gap fill at 340. On the Russell 2000 IWM ETF, we were down 1% today and we're continuing the breakdown. As we know, we already broke the critical support at 183, which meant we were likely going towards towards 178 and then the gap fell at 176. So you can see things are moving right along ever since we broke 183 and we are heading down to that support level. So in order to get bullish, I would like to see the small caps breaking back above 186 and then 188. On the RK ETF, we were down 1.76% as we continue that rejection from critical resistance and the next critical support will be right here, right around 40.5. Below that, that's a lower low breakdown from the lower high and it means we're likely going down towards the gap flat 36. So I would not be getting bullish in ARK until we can get a close above 44.5. 
On the VIX, we were up 7.15% today and the VIX did close above 15. So we are starting to see fear back in this market. And if we continue to see high volume panic selling, expect to see the VIX spiking back up towards 18. But keep in mind, the bond bands are squeezing. So as I said before, it's not likely going to happen in a straight line. It will look a lot more bullish if this was just a one day spike in the VIX and then we would immediately crush it, but wait for confirmation from the price action. On Bitcoin, we're currently down half a percent and Bitcoin is trying to get another daily close above all the moving averages, which is going to require a close above 27,000. The bull breakout will be above the high at 27,700 and critical resistance at 28,000. And any rejection in a break of critical support at 25,000 will be very bearish and will likely send us down to 22,000. On Tesla stock, we were down 1.47% today and intraday Tesla bounced up towards that critical resistance at 274 and rejected it and closed lower than yesterday's open. So it does look like we're still trending lower towards the gap at 256. Keep in mind, we have a bull trend. So the gap flow at 256 is likely going to be a higher low buying opportunity as we head higher towards 290. On Apple stock, we were down 2% today with the rejection from resistance at 179. And there was the possibility of a double bottom off 174 if we can break that neckline at 180. So wait for the confirmation of the break of 180 to get more bullish. And if we can break 180, then we can likely start trending higher towards 190. But on a rejection of 179, we're looking for critical support at 174. And if we break critical support, you're looking for the gap flow at 167. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, this is the break of critical support. And this is following FOMC. And we are in line with the weekly chart that said we would likely go down towards 430. So that's the expectation as long as we have this bearish configuration below 442 and the price action below all the moving averages. Nothing moves in a straight line. So even if we bounce from here, it's still likely going to be lower highs as we continue lower. And then once we get to 430, if we do get to 430, we'll see if it holds as support or if we're going to start entering into a bear trend. So go back and review that weekly chart analysis because it's looking more and more likely that that's going to be the important chart you should be paying attention to and use the daily chart as your guide as we head down towards that direction. We are absolutely crushing this market on the Sox Channel Discord and Bank Trade Alerts and you can still get the Bank Labor Day sale which I'll put all of the details in the description below. So thank you for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market and as always I will see you in the next episode.